Hello, my name is John Spagel. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. As always, I explained that they come up with the title. I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran, where the Holy Spirit is expanding under Great Tribulation, uh, not the Great Tribulation, but Tribulation of Church Persecution of God's Word and other places. Right now, it's ironic where Israel was considered, you know, Africa was getting after Israel about genocide, where Africa right now is killing. Christians like crazy just for uh, in certain areas, but the media don't tell you about that. You have to excuse my buddy Apaches. He was upset today. We had a family emergency. I had one of the people in the hospital. <laughs> I had to go over and take care of grandkids for a while, and uh, I've been gone all day, and he is upset with me. I've had the hardest time trying to write a video. This is another take. I had to stop one video and start over. I had a hardest time writing my words down. So he's a, he's a character. There's a lot going on in my family. So uh, I, I don't know how the days are going to be. I'll be helping the grandkids. Uh, and so uh, I, uh, I'll i be making videos every day. But some may be pretty late by the time I get them on, on there. Like the other day, I was busy doing stuff. And I had it was late by the time I did the video. But I want to be obedient to God and do videos every day. We're, every, we're just one day closer to the... Pre-tribulation rapture of the church. So let me get started on this. We'll go over a few things and hopefully he'll <laughs> he'll wind down a little bit here. He's trying to calm down that dad's home. Like I said, I've been home. I've been uh, writing on this. I've took me four, I did a four hour. I already knew what I was going to do this about. and I already had part of it already done, but uh, study where I wanted to go with it. And uh, my time was spent here with my buddy. There's a lot of people come to this channel. I started, been doing this for four years. It's nothing new. I, uh, after I survived cancer, I, I started making videos and just talking about different things. I love talking about God. I couldn't get out uh, as much. And uh, I'm a disabled veteran. I have a lot of health issues. Like this year, I've had three operations. So I got a lot going on. So I didn't get a chance, you know, to get out and talk to people. And I love to talk about God. And so uh, my personality is... Uh, I I just love God and, and of course love animals. I have a lot of rescue animals, and uh, family is everything to me. It's a gift from God, and uh, but I, I I was in the Air Force for eight years, infantry for thirteen. I've been overseas twice. Served I was part of two wars. Um, unfortunately, uh, been an underground coal miner for many years, and then worked a lot of factories, done a lot of factory work. So. Everything's labor to me. I started around, I was probably 13 years old, a man, a man that spent a lot of years in, in uh, uh, well, one of the guys I, I, I knew through church, he was taking lessons from a guy who spent a lot of years in Shaolin Temple, so I, over in China. So I got involved in a lot of martial arts and a young. Then I, I learned what good things and bad things about martial arts. Uh, some things we should practice, some things we shouldn't. Uh, to me, martial arts is not just like a karate thing, it's the art of combat. And I love the combat fighting and training. I, I do not. I'm not a, a type of person that just I want to hurt people. Uh, people must understand. I knew when I grew up in high school, they said, you either be a Marine or a minister. Because I always carried my Bible. I was always praying around people, seeing me at school, and praying. But uh, I was quick to throw a punch. So <laughs> that's just how I am. That's the way God made me. So, uh, and you think, well, why did you go in the Air Force? Well, uh, when I decided I went to college, I was going to be a cop. And so I went to college for a year. And then I decided at the time I wanted to see, I was reading a, a book in between classes and I was wanting to cross that river, you know, so to speak. I wanted to, uh, uh, stand by the river where I live at. And I was waiting in between classes, had like a couple hour break. And I was, I just wanted to see the world. I was ready. So when I made a decision, try to get a hold of Marine Corps, by the time everything was done, it was going to be like six months. But no problem. I was in shape. I was in good condition then. I mean, on my own, I was doing a lot of martial arts training. I did my runs five days a week, which is two and a half miles. It was a real hilly area I ran. But once a week, I did my long run, uh, and that's a 10-mile run. So I was doing all this. I started this since about freshman in high school. It was all through high school and even after high school. I was a, so the physical fitness was nothing to me. And I was, my dad thought I was crazy. Not too crazy because he was a Korean War veteran, and he knew a lot of stuff. I had to uh, like a fence post in my backyard. That's what a punch uh, in the ground. 
Uh, that's where I punched and kicked against, conditioned my body. I had stacks of bricks I would, I would break, and then I had buckets of rock uh, and sand. Sand's great. You put your hands in there and get your, you learn your grips by doing the, I meant not sand, I apologize, uh, rice. And then sand, you pound the sand, that's to condition your hands. And then you had to, some smaller rocks where you can practice finger jabs and different things like that. I would just eat up on a lot of stuff. I just loved the training and did it. And so uh, I grew up in the country. It's a perfect spot uh, to beat up on trees and, and different things. So just, but God bless me. I had a good, I had a good life and a real good life. And and so, but yeah, I had a stack of bricks. I would break, like I said, break the bricks and different things. And, and yes, sir. And so uh, I love that. And then uh, the Air Force, I met the Air Force recruiter, and he knew I was an old country boy. I used to hunt, fish, and trap. So I made money back then. And so I knew all that stuff. And so he was like, well, you know, we do survival training. It's like, what? <laughs> so actually, one of the, the toughest schools, and no, I didn't go to that school, uh, is pararescue, different things like that, BJs and, and the Air Force. There's a lot of survival training, and they always think that, you know, I have friends of mine, like Navy, I went to Sears, uh, training and uh, survival training and stuff like that, which is real good. Air Force has a lot of survival training, too. People don't realize it. And we did the uh, House of the Ages Moves back in 1986. We built the first uh, and only POW training camp in, on Guam, and we gave that training. Uh, POW training had to be very realistic. I gave POW training, uh, jungle warfare training, and uh, water survival training while I was over there. And then Later, went to Little Rock Air Force Base, and then during Operation Desert Storm, I was going to different military bases given chemical warfare training. So I actually didn't go overseas that time. Unfortunately, I did go overseas that same area years later when I went to Army National Guard, and during Operation Enduring Freedom I, from 2000, oh, boots on ground, February 18th, uh, 2003 till uh, about 2000, June 2004, uh, around between June 20th and 24th. I always forget my exit date. I never, never why. I never forget the day I got there, but because uh, that day we got there, we got off the plane. All of a sudden, we had to hit the deck because some sniper was out there shooting people. <laughs> and yeah, they started attacking by a laugh. But you got to understand. But yeah, we, we were getting attacked right off the bat. And it was like our reality set. And it was like, what did we get signed up for? So yeah, I spent 15, 16 months there. And so, uh, a lot of things happened. Lost a lot of friends then and after, and a lot of things you have to deal with that you that you uh, do because of war. It's a lot there. So anybody's a combat veteran, I give my respect to you. You know, there's a lot you got to deal with. People don't understand. So, but anyways, I digress. Uh, I'm just trying to say some things about myself, and and so yeah, I love to be fiscal. I, I love. You know, I have a permanent cosmic bag and stuff, so I hate that because uh, I, you know, I really love boxing. That's how I got in the Army National Guard. I was doing a boxing program in Washington, Indiana, with some guys uh, trying to motivate some teenagers that got in trouble with the law, trying to give them discipline. So uh, that's how I got involved in there, and uh, things escalated from that. But anyways, my boys come down here, so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, I have memory issue, I have health issues, so I, I I tried this bit 20 minutes on a video and I stopped it over because Mr. Here was throwing us such a fit. So uh, I don't remember exactly what I've said before, but I'll, I'll get into it. Uh, I always give out a rapture, I have my rapture rapture info here. When I talk about rapture, I think what's on the next chron chronicle line, God's timeline, is the pre-tribulation rapture. That's We're in the season, and I'll talk about that later, how we're in the season and we're, we're getting ready. I recommend uh, everything about the pre-tribulation rapture is a title of a video I made uh, a while back. It's a very good video. I put a lot of information out there for people. The word rapture is not in the Bible. I've had people get after me and get after me. It's not there. I'm looking for it. It's not there. No such thing. Well, understand your Bible. And I tried to talk to one young man, and I was writing back and forth about Greek. And he said, I don't care about Greek. Well, your New Testament was written in Co Old Coin Greek, Old Former Greek. So, yeah, you better understand. <laughs> How you going to understand the Bible if you really don't search? Uh, the New Testament is written in Greek. The Old Testament is written in Hebrew with a couple areas of Aramaic. I was thinking it was the book of, either the book of Ruth or Esther. And then uh, there's another verse. It was Aramaic and everything else is written in Hebrew. Um, 
but the word is harpazo. It means, you know, we use phrases for it, how we know what they, you know, like caught up, falling away, departure, translated. And, of course, uh, for Latin, they use a uh, reptirio or reptirio, reptiro, which we get the word, English word rapture. But it really means harpazo. We're talking about harpazo means rapture, which means a translated or catching or a movement from one spot to another. And also means ecstasy, like it's a joyous uh uh, occasion, uh, very joyous occasion emotionally, very joyous emotionally. There's 10 biblical raptures according to scriptures. When people come up to you and say, John, do you believe in free tribulation rapture or a mid tribulation rapture or a post tribulation rapture? I say all of the above, and they look at me like, what are you talking about? I said, there's one pre tribulation rapture, there's one mid tribulation rapture, and there's two post tribulation raptures. I'm like, dude, you're, you're messed up. <laughs> That's what I get from people. But uh, we go in the book, the New Te- uh, in the New Testament. I mean, there is ten biblical raptures according to the scriptures. Enoch, well, not a lot of New Testament because Enoch and some of the others are in Old Testament. Apologize about that. Enoch, Genesis five twenty one through twenty four, and Hebrews eleven five talk about Enoch walked with God and was no more. He was raptured. Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. Two Kings two eleven. Jesus ascension after he came back to life and witnessed to the disciples for 30, 40 days. His ascension, Acts 1, 9 through 11. Philip, when he was, as soon as he baptized the Ethiopian official, he went up and then went to a different spot. Not to heaven, but a different spot on earth and, and preached. That's Acts 8, 26 through 40. Then we hear of Paul. A doorway opened up in heaven for him for a vision. 2 Corinthians 2, 12. John in Revelation uh, 4, 1 through 2. And then we get what's next on the timeline, the body of Christ, pre-tribulation rapture. And that is taught in Matthew 24, 36 through 51, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. And then we have mid-tribulation. We have where the uh, two... Two witnesses lied dead three and a half days in the street, uh, brought back to life and, and raptured up, or raised up. That's, that's Revelation 11, 3 through 12. Now, as in I talked in the last video, how, how we're up, the wedding feast up, and then all of a sudden we come with Christ down. It talks about Jude, Jude 14, where he comes with the saints. That's us. Uh, we're seven years with Christ. We come down. And as we come down, those that were martyred during the seven-year tribulation, uh, the souls are in the altar, it talks about in Revelation. And they talk to God, that, that get, when are you going to avenge us? And God said, just this time, there's more to be killed, but then your time will be up. And uh, that's the martyred saints, Revelation 14, 14 through 16. Their bodies will, the, the bodies will come out of the graves. Like right now, we're waiting for... The pre-tribulation rapture, when that takes place, those that died in Christ first will be will raised, their bodies will be raised to meet Jesus in the clouds because their souls are coming with Jesus and they'll get the glorified bodies. Then we, which are alive, will be caught up. And then we will have our bodies, will, our bodies will change before we're caught up. It's a twinkling of an eye. When this happens, as those, uh, the dead in Christ go up, our world changes at that moment instantly. And then after they're done, we go up. And, uh, so, Revelation 14, 14 through 16, when we come back down with Jesus, he comes in all his glory. That's us, people. We're all his glory. His army, we're part of that. And so, when we when he comes down, as he's get, coming down, the martyred saints will go up and get their bodies, and then we will touch down. Why? Because those martyred saints were, you know, people say, well, the marriage of the Lamb, that's at the end of uh, Revelation. You go, no, we're not going to, you don't have the marriage, you don't have no ceremony that way, people. We have a ceremony. We've got a, a it's a seven year ceremony we're going to have with Christ. But as we come down on Mount Olives, all to Armageddon, like, like Paul was taken from one spot to another on earth, all to Armageddon is going to come. Revelation 14, 17 through 20. Also, you look at uh, Matthew 13. I believe it's, it's another place talks about, you know, the weeks from, from tares, judgment. That's what's going to happen. Same thing. Revelation 14, 17 through 20. Same thing. If it's called the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Uh, we'll come to uh, Armageddon for judgment. 
Now I give a shout out to some channels uh, just to, to discern. Uh, I don't know. I've looked at a few of these, these channels, and uh, uh, there's only one I really look a lot at. And so I really stand by him because I'm going to make a, a point about him. But these other channels are good, as far as I understand. Uh, you don't know, you know, you have to make up your mind on things. I don't always agree with some stuff, but most stuff I agree with. And that's Hanging Out with Stan, Watchman River by Tom Cope, Watchman on the Wall 88 by Chad, Watchman Adam, Melvin McComer, Dr. Barry All. Sometimes with Dr. Barry, I don't agree with stuff, but that's still, he's, and he's got a group that's uh, been uh, reading Luke, Book of Luke, like a, uh, uh, Tom Cope and his wife did one chapter of Luke they read together. So he's got different, uh, as we call watchmen, uh, and watch women. That's, that's, that's like what I am. I'm a watchman. Uh, we're, we're talking about pre tribulation rapture, rapture, and we're watching for it. And, uh, he's got a long list of people there. So I recommend go there and use God's word and learn. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I, I'm very, I take, I'm responsible for sending you somewhere, you know, as in God's eyes. But at the same time, uh, open the scriptures and see and and look. Now, I'm about to talk about new news by Ross. I really like what he does. He does kind of like what I do. I break things down. I just started looking at his stuff uh, uh, not too long ago because we had seen something uh, agreed on. And then someone's like, you're talking about the hidden ones. Well, have you watched Ron, uh, Ross? And I think I had just heard of him or I just looked at one of his videos. And so uh, because we both, I agree we're in the Psalm 83 war. October the 7th. We're in that season. And uh, that season is November, December, and January. Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, we, in 36 through 51, but first few verses, uh, he talks about uh, the mystery, you know, the pre watch for the pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, to, uh, uh, you know, two people in the field, one taking one left, two women grinding out the meal, one taking one left. We get clues to certain things, and we clues that it's a season. It's a harvest season when this uh, pre-tribulation rapture happens, and we're in a harvest season right now. A lot of people don't understand this is the last harvest season of the year for Israel because it's not about the U.S. or Canada or, or wherever. It's it's about Israel. And so uh, uh, they're in their harvest, and their harvest, winter harvest was November, December, and then part of January, then in the rest of January, the rains come to uh, uh, water the fields. So uh, we're in that time right now. And uh, I believe uh, that's how we know what season, three months, this is what I'm looking at. I'm not a pre-date setter. I don't agree with dates. I did a video a while back looking at different stuff and looking at feasts. And, and I was looking at that because it's been a while since I, you know, I took a break and it's been a while. So I was getting back into it. But then. I remember after I started doing that, that's like, man, this date setting stuff, it misleads people. It really does. So I'm not big into it. Now, uh, new news, I say something about Ross because I, I, I've talked about this person before because someone had told me he had referred that he was saying some stuff. Uh, this person is one of the guys that put out there. He's talking December the 6th was the day rapture was going to take place. It didn't happen. Then later he said I was wrong. You know, he was saying God showed him that he was wrong. God shows you something. You're right. You're not wrong. And then he was talking about January 7th. Now, I don't know what days he's got now, but I've had some people comment to me. He's saying a lot about Ross at New News, and that's Cool Cat. I don't know him. I don't. Uh, uh, I looked up the video they were talking about. Uh, he he says a lot about New News, Ross, and saying he's a false teacher. Now, he's, he's done it twice. The second time, first time he was really bashing on him. The second time he wasn't. He was just saying, well, he means well, but he's not really, you know, that we are to be the salt of the earth. And then he starts talking about this, but uh, I would recommend Ross on this list. I give you above everybody else. That's for how he breaks things down. Well, that's how I like to do stuff, but it, it gives a lot of knowledge to you. And it's just a study. He never, never has claimed to be a teacher. You know, that's like me. I'm not a teacher. I just like to break things down. I see things and I show you where I see things, but by all means, I just had, actually, I, I just, I hated doing it, but she kept saying stuff and saying stuff. And when I when I made a comment to her, because people can disagree, uh, she put out 20 comments yesterday on a video. And what it was was uh, I seen her put out, this lady put comments before, and I've talked to her about her before. She's on my prayer list, by the way. I got a prayer list. I pray for everybody. Everybody subscribe. 
you're immediately on the list. I'm, I'm praying. Uh, but anyways, she, uh, it's throwing out verses and verses and verses. But then I was like, there's something I feel odd about this lady, but I, I don't know what. And then when she, uh, uh, a couple of videos ago, recommended that I should go watch Murray. And I was like, uh, he's a pastor. He's passed on. Uh, Murray's his last name. He was a, uh, I can't, I don't have it written down. I don't remember. But I knew him because my cousins were lived nearby there. They're very active in church and they have a very good church and they do a lot. But, uh, He's he was a marine and they became a minister and this and that, but far brimstone, you know. But unfortunately, he's so big on against the pre-tribulation rapture that he teaches that we're a heretic. You're going to go to hell if you uh, talk about this pre-tribulation rapture, and really, it's against that. I understand this, people, and I did a video about this. If you deny the pre-tribulation rapture, you're denying Jesus Christ coming for his bride. So you're denying Christ. If you deny Christ, then Christ will deny you. I'm very strong about that, very adamant. I've had people say, well, John, maybe. No, I there. I mean, it's there. You know, sometimes we do have to be the salt of the earth. Unfortunately, this cool cat is doing it the wrong way. But he's top calling out someone and making someone a, saying he's a false teacher who could help so many people. And actually, uh, and so he does. He's very good at what he does. Uh, but I go into this because this lady uh, said a bunch of stuff, and then I, I referred back. You know, I talked about how this, I don't agree with this man. Then back and forth, and things just escalated after that. And she started verses, and I thought, I'll just be silent. More verses, more verses. And then she, when she put out there, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and start doing all this other stuff, then I was like, I'm done. Done with the game, so I contacted uh, YouTube and said, I want to ban from coming to, because I don't want to stop the comments. And it's not, I don't mind criticism. I don't mind bad comments. That means you're looking in the Word. I'm to motivate people. That's what I want to do, motivate people to be in the Word. And we're not going to agree on everything. And uh, and I, I could be in error of things, but one thing is I don't, I'm not in error of pre-tribulation rapture. I've got too much stuff out there, you know, and I think that's why God put me here in this time that he's put me. But I did all this for a reason. This person, she really believes in what she's doing. She's been indoctrinated in something that's not correct, and she's just fighting and fighting and fighting. And it just, God brings things for a reason. And hopefully she'll, like I said, she's on my prayer list, and hopefully she'll see things different. But time is short. But it gave me the title for where I was wanting to go anyway, and I was thinking about doing this. And what I titled this is From Saul to Paul to Pre-Tribulation Rapture Doctrine. So how God takes someone that's basically having people killed and killing people, there's a very religious man, and then he turns around and turns him towards doing his work and being, I think, one of the greatest apostles there ever was. But, you know, apostles, you don't want to, you know, put them on a pedestal. And that's the reason why Paul always had an ailment. People don't know what it is. People speculate. Some say it's because of, of his eyes and it was, it was getting blindness, you know. But he was getting older in life. You know, so I don't think that's what there was a physical ailment. Paul preached three, I mean, asked three times for it to be healed, and finally accepted that Jesus wasn't going to let it heal. Jesus told him and said, I'm not going to let it heal. I'm using it. Because these apostles, people don't realize these apostles did miracles. All right. 144,000 Jewish men that go out during the seven year tribulation and go and spread the gospel to the world will be able to do what the apostles did. They will do these miracles. Do I believe in modern day prophets? Absolutely not. There's no reason for them. We have the Holy Scripture. A lot of times, if God showed me this, I'm a prophet. We have to be careful because it says in the last days, and we are in the last days, that the things will be about and prophecies will come about again. So I'm, I step back and look at what they say, and is it in the Scripture? I had one guy say, well, God showed me Donald Trump this and that. Well, there you go right there. We're not going to be here for election. And Donald Trump is not a godly man. He's, he's misled many people. Uh, people, I mean, he's part of the game. He's an elite. He's fooled many. Uh, yes, I voted for him one time against Hillary Clinton. I've been in Arkansas. Don't, don't get me started about the Clintons. But uh, uh, a lot going on there. And uh, I, I don't, I don't care to vote anymore or anything like that because it's all, it's all set up. And people say, no, you're not patriot. I get mad when people tell me I should be a patriot. People, I served enough for this country, 21 years, and uh, I've got all kinds of problems from it. So don't, don't, don't 
get me about being a patriot. And for one thing in there, I don't want to support America. America is the leading nation in abortion, uh, all the homosexual and sexual perversions of this country. Why should I want to support that? I support God and Jesus Christ. I don't support a country. All right. I mean, Israel. I look at Israel. That's that's people's. But right now, Israel's being misled. It's like the Sahedrin. You know, they, they're being misled by bad people. So I don't, you know, I just don't support their support. But those are God's people. And they, the land is theirs. And so, uh, anyways, let's get into this. So Acts 7, 54 through 60. Now, this is talking about uh, the Sahedrin are angry at uh, the truth. They've been told the truth, all right? From Acts 7, 1 through 53, they've been told by Stephen the truth. He's told them uh, how bad they've done and how evil they are. And so we start at 54 and go through 60. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They were just angry. They didn't want to hear the truth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus and standing on the right hand of God. So because Stephen had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, he was able, God allowed him, because we see things that normal people don't see. When we study God's word, we're led because we're led by the Holy Spirit. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They they denied. They they denied everything. They denied Jesus Christ and everything. He told them he killed Christ. And they're like, no, we did. And so, uh, they wanted to stop him from speaking the truth and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. So they gave a trophy to this man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. This does not sound like a man fear. He had faith. He knew where he, I mean, he just seen heaven open to him. He knew where he was going. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, voice Lord Lay not the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He loved his brethren even though they were killing him. He had such great love for him. It's like, don't don't lay this charge to him. Even though they were stoning him to death. And uh, that's, that's another person in heaven I can't wait to see and meet, uh, Stephen. Acts 8, 1 through 3. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. In other words, Saul was giving his consent. He was approval to the death. He was uh, happy about the death of Stephen. And they all were scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So they were they were attempt to uh, disband this Christianity that was getting started. And they were trying they, they tried to spread them throughout. Now the apostles, they could because apostles had power of God. Uh, and they were given power, so they couldn't really affect them. Now later on, they, they kill uh, majority of my very, you know, they, they face a lot of trials, but that was for a witness for God. Peter willingly, he denied Christ and uh, he felt so bad, you know, when he did that. But uh, he died on the cross. He was upside down. He said, hang me upside down because I cannot, I'm not worthy enough to die like my, my father. So he more made up for, you know, he was flushed. He made a mistake before, but he more than made it up. Now, anybody else denies Christ now, Christ says he'll deny you. So, devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Uh, traditions, uh, lamentations, the mourning is they, they take ash, burn ash, and cover the bodies with ash. That's a grieving, that's an out grieving thing they do. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. So he brought the people out to put them in prison. Notice he went into their houses. Why? Because that's where church was. It wasn't a building he went to. I mean, he met sometimes outside. but And they go to the synagogue, but Solomon's porch, you know, there was preaching there. Excuse my sinuses. But uh, it was in the homes, you know, where two or three meet. I'll be there. Jesus Christ talks about he'll be there. Acts 9, 1 through 31. And Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of, any of this way 
whether they were men or women, he might bring them down into Jerusalem. So he wants to bring them back to prison, most of them to have them killed. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So it's a supernatural event. Scared him, he just flattened himself on the ground. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against pricks. Now, what's this mean here? You know, this could mean something here. It's understanding the Greek. Uh, the pricks is uh, a goad. It's a, a staff, but with a point, almost like a spear. They work their oxen, and they would you know, be bunt. They'd stab them in the butt, <laughs> in the hip. I'm oh, sorry. But they... And when he talks about kicking against them, you don't want to kick against them. That's a sharp point you're kicking against. But this is a proverb, actually, that they used a lot in the Greek. That's the reason why it says that. The reason why it says, hard for thee to kick against pricks. I mean, that's what it's all about. And it's a proverb used uh, by the Greek people. And it's well known because the Jewish people knew, knew about this proverb. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and thou shalt be told thee what to do. So uh, he asked for understanding to what should I do. Uh, I think at this point he talked about Stephen. You know, you realized what he had done wrong. And it just realized there is a Jesus Christ. I mean, he was the Messiah. He wouldn't be talking to him now. And all those people were condemned. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And they were unbelievers. They, they couldn't uh, see what uh, Saul saw. And Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. In other words, he was blinded at that moment. And he was three days without drink, sight, and neither did eat nor drink. So he, he was fasted. He was blind. He was fasting. And there was also a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And, and to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. This was common. They didn't have the scripture like we have the scripture. So they had a lot of more supernatural uh, connections and things and messages and visions and stuff. Now, I'm not saying people aren't seeing visions now. I'm hearing all sorts of stuff about visions, and I won't deny that it, it, we're at that point where they start anyways, because there's been people in Hamas who've come to know Jesus Christ and, and come away from that. And I believe that's true. I believe there's visions all over. I, I heard from someone... Uh, over in Africa that they were seeing some visions because they were under great persecution. Like I said, there's a genocide going on. They say it's because of farming, but it's because of uh, Christianity. And so I'm not denying that. Definitely not denying that. Um, I just, there's people come on here and, and, and YouTube and say they're a prophet and they say stuff. For one thing, there's not a female prophet. So uh, uh, that's according to, well, Paul's teachings about uh, different positions of each person within the, the church. Body of Christ. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul a Tarsus, and behold, he prayeth. So Saul now was seeking. He was praying and seeking. And uh, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. So God revealed something to him. And then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man by how much evil had done to thy saints of Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Basically he's saying, Lord, is this the same man? You know, I've heard things about this guy. Now you want me to go help him? And that's been my death. Because actually, it, you know, it would have the old Saul, you know, not the new Saul. But, uh, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. God used this bad for good. And uh, also, I think by turning Saul into good, it gave Saul the motive, had the motivation. And plus, remember, he's a Roman citizen. That comes into effect later on in certain instances where they couldn't kill him. They had to listen to what he had to say later. At times, he was captured because he was a Roman citizen. There was a lot of laws. As I said, you have to understand the, uh, the culture over there. That's the reason why God used him, because Saul was able to go where the other apostles weren't without so much, you know, they had to hide and do things like that. And Saul didn't have to. I mean, later he changed his name to Paul. 
But he still, he didn't have to. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in thy way as thou comest, but sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So at that moment, he was filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, he was able to see. You notice how God takes a physical blindness and it represents, because he had spiritual blindness. He couldn't see God. And, and, and it opened up a, a spiritually and physically to him. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight from forth forth, and arose and was baptized. So he, he was obedient. He, he stated, he starts with obedience. The first thing he does, he's obedient and gets baptized. And when he received meat, he was strengthened, and Saul, then with Saul certain days with the disciples were at uh, Damascus. In other words, God took care of his, you know, his needs, his take, the physical body. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So again, Saul became obedient, and he puts his risk, his life at risk by preaching. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he that destroyed them which caught on his name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them down unto the chief priest? People knew Saul. They knew he, what he was supposed to do. I mean, word travels. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, Damascus, proving that it is very Christ. So nothing stopped him. He preached even more. When they attacked him, he did more for the kingdom. And after this, after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying in wait was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So there, Saul's going to be killed for what he, he was killing people for. Then the disciples took him by the night and led him down by the wall in a basket. Uh, the disciples, you know, of course, he was safe. And when Paul and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. I understand that. I can understand that because it could be a trap. You know, that's what they were looking at. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them that how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was, because he, you know, he, he witnessed, and he told him it could be the cost of his life the way he was preaching Jesus uh, Saul. And he was with them coming in and coming out of Jerusalem. In other words, he was working God's kingdom, helping him, putting himself at risk. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. And again, he explained that he put his life on the line for God, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in, in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So his, his work just multiplied the uh, uh, body of Christ. Now, I wanted to end with what Saul taught. Uh, Saul became uh, Paul. Uh, he later changed his name and uh, did a lot of uh, ministry for Christ. But what was the main thing he talked about in all his letters and everything? People you know, don't want to admit it, but it was the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. That's what he taught. I'm taught. I'm sorry, my, my speech. These letters to these churches, he went there before and went back. And when people were saying it wasn't true, first, second Thessalonians, he, he I spoke again. So I'm going to end this with 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. This is exactly what he taught to the churches. But at the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So he's talking about the season of something. And, of course, we know the season of pre-tribulation rapture because he's going to get in more into uh, about uh, the pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, we know when that season started. It was when Hamas... It started the Psalm 83 war, October 7th, uh, 2023. And that season uh, started in October, but it, the, the season marks the uh, fall harvest. I'm at the last harvest, which is uh, November, December, and January. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is so cometh as a thief in the night. No warning. No thief is going to warn you they're coming. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, before I was, I was thinking about this, it was Israel saying peace and safety. 
you're hearing the United Nations and, and U.S. and all that stuff saying that a few months ago, but it's Israel that has to say it and think it. And, and uh, I just want to recommend Russ by new news because he explains it perfect. And I believe that's the reason why Cool Cat keeps attacking. To be honest with you, God, Satan uses people. Like, look at Saul. Saul was being led by Satan, thinking he was very religious and he was very adamant, but he was doing it the wrong way and causing the life of people. Uh, Ross teaches a lot of good things, but he's accurate on this from what I've seen from what, you know, I don't do it because, you know, because I've, I've sent him a message one time uh, because there's something he's waiting for Israel to say peace and safety. And I'm thinking we're gone before then. We could be gone before then. We don't have to be here, which they will. They'll think they'll win the Gaza war. They'll get the rest of the hostages or find them and they'll get this leader kill him or uh, get the last leader they're looking for. And for a minute, for a short period of time, they think we've solved this. We could bring people in. They're already talking about bringing people in afterwards, give them back to the Palestinians, send them back in there. And uh, that's when Israel, I mean, Iran's lost. They got to attack and it's going to be a nuclear attack, but God will stop them. In Isaiah 17, Damascus will be destroyed at this time. Ezekiel 38 happens mid-tribulation. A lot of people are looking at, well, this is Psalm 83, Ezekiel 8, Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, uh, Ezekiel 38. No, this is Psalm 80, This is Psalm 83, Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, but Ezekiel 38 is mid-tribulation war. You know, because right now this war is about annihilation. Ezekiel's war about taking the spoils. So there's a difference. Um, but the sudden destruction is when Iran will try to take out Israel. And I'm really starting to look at I've been in a lot of prayer lately. I think Israel's going to try to take out um, Israel. Iran's going to do their threats. They've been threatening to take out Israel and the United States both together for a long time. I think this is what's going to happen. And I think it, it's, it's going to come true. God's going to save Israel. God is not going to save the United States. This is it for the United States. Uh, we were we we've been we need uh, judgment on this nation for a long time. Like I said, we're the leading nation in child pornography, all sexual perversions, homosexuality, LGBTQ, all this stuff about gender switching, and all this uh, uh, just taking these children, and using them for all kinds of sex stuff. Government people are involved. That's just why they want to open border. They're bringing in stuff. They're getting these children right underneath their noses, doing all sorts of stuff in this country. And uh, abortions, if I haven't said that in my memory, uh, that's another. Uh, it's just disgusting what's going on. And we deserve nothing but judgment in this nation. You can, I, I pray for the people to come out, but I don't pray for this nation. I pray for God to bring judgment. And I believe he's going to use Iran. He uses good and bad. And that's what I see. I see Israel being saved by God, and the whole world will see it, and the United States will be destroyed. We'll be gone before then. We might hear Israel say peace and safety. We might. If we do, then you know you would, we're really close. You know, But I, I don't know about that. But the rest of the destruction is going to happen on everybody. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as uh, others do, but let us watch and be sober. Like I, I said in previous videos, there's over eight times Jesus Christ said, be watchful. So we are to be watchful, and that's where we are now. That we're, every day is a day closer, and uh, we're not going to be taken by a sore surprise. Now, what it means by that, I think something's, something's going to be there. I mean, we get the sense of urgency. I've got it now, and even more, but it just seems like, any day now, any day now. And like I said, we're in that season. I've heard people say, well, what do you think about the election in November? I don't see us being here. Now, can we be here as late as February? Uh, could be. There's a lot going on. Jesus before has re referred about tarrying a little bit. Uh, they're bringing more of the harvest. And also Israel is having trouble getting this last harvest in because I talked about the IDF. Uh, all the reserves got pulled in, so they've had people from all over. You always talk about the old boys from Arkansas going over there helping. Most people put their lives on the line to help bring in this harvest. And I've not seen anything recently to see they should be about done. So I don't, and replanting stuff, I don't know. I don't know where they're at with it. But it'd be the month of January. 
like I said, November, December, January, and then uh, possibly sometime in, in February. But it's going to be a day that people don't think, you know. No one knows the day or the hour. Christ has said that many times, at least five times. So we don't know, so I don't stress over trying to know the day. I just know we're close. And each day I, I live, I'm trying to make videos and motivate people and, and be more into God's Word. And I'm getting all kinds of ideas for videos, and I believe that's from God. So I'll keep it up. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. People that live for the world, we don't live for the world. So that's why they're caught off guard. But let us who are the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Don't live worldly. Live for God, which is good. I'm getting toward the end of my video because my cat's woke up. So he's the one going there and he'll go holler for me to take him. I have to watch him eat his food. I just, that's patches. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake us wake, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So, in other words, those dead in Christ are going to be lifted up, and us living will be lifted up. We're not here for the seven year tribulation people. That is for the Jewish people. A right to bring obedience and make make up for their iniquities. That's for them, and then punishment on an unbelieving world. It is not for us. We, we obtain our salvation through Jesus Christ, and we are we are uh, get, got the gift of grace. That's why we can't be here during the seven-year tribulation, because those people die don't have the gift of grace. Remember, I talked to you about the martyred you know, being gone up. Those people have to be martyred. All right. It, it, so they come to know Christ, but. They don't have the gift of grace because we're gone. The gift goes with us. And, of course, I say he died for us that we, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. We're going to be harpazzled up soon and forever. We're going to be with God. And there's my buddy. Let me know. One more thing. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye, even as also ye do. In other words, calm down. It's a bad world. Everything's going to get bad. We know it. Don't stress over it. It's going to get bad. We're going to go up soon. And once we go up, it gets even worse. So, God bless you. I hope this encourages you, gives you understanding. I'm going to be doing more videos. Uh, the hour's going to be gone. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot going on in my family. And so, uh, yes, just a minute. I'm almost ready. And so, so, I don't know with watching the kids and everything going on. It's, it's my, my son's. My son's an unbeliever. He's left his wife for, he's been living with this other girl for, for a few months. Uh, I disagree with all that, but she's had serious health issues. And this may be God bringing these people and clearing things up. May, through this, I may, my son may get to know God. I, there's a lot going on right now. And, uh, so I'll be putting videos out, but some may be late at night, yeah, but I'm still going to be obedient to God. I can sleep later. <laughs> God bless you, love you, and uh, I look forward to meeting you. And uh, Patches will be with me in heaven. Uh, he's honorary. So thank you very much.